Hello, my name is Susanne Schröter-Bergen and today I'm talking about analyzing localness of OSM data. At first, I will show you my um, overview of my presentation. I will talk about what localness is and which methods have already been applied to measure localness. After this, I'm contrasting two methods and further I will show you some prospects for more research and then I will come to my conclusion. Let me start with a general embedding of OSM. With the web 2.0, a new hope was connected that new civil society projects such as OSM will open up the production of geographical knowledge. Before web 2.0, the production of geographical knowledge was dominated by governmental organizations such as military, cartography and surveying offices or universities and a few specialized private sector companies. It is assumed that now many ordinary people on the ground can generate knowledge about the everyday environment through new tools in Web 2.0. This is called Volunteer Geographic Information or VGI. It is assumed that now uh, everyone can join in. But OSM is still dominated by certain groups and their worldviews, mostly highly educated people from the global no north, which are male and have a high affinity to technology, um, start to map. Already, Gutschild argued in 2007 in his much cited VGI founding text as follows. Thus, the most important value of VGI may lie in what it can tell about local activities in various geographic locations that go un unnoticed by the world's media and about life at a local level. Also, other early scholars follow this argument. This is um, a regularly, regularly reproduced mantra of the debate on volunteer geographic information and can be summarized by the term localness. This record, um, it emphasizes the actual or at least the desired local production of geographical information. But in fact, relatively little is known about how local the data actually are. Last but not least, there is a lack of deeper reflection of localness. On closer examination, localness is first of all only an attribution that is brought to VGI from the academic debate. The local expertise operates as a claim to truth of BGI, in contrast to conventional geodata, whose truth claim is more likely to be based on professional and technical expertise, BGI is often leg legitimized by its authenticity due to its localness. Although localness is accepted as a central quality feature of BGI, it is hardly taken into account for its evaluation. On the mailing list and in the forum, questions of localness and remoteness were discussed frequently and also sometimes controversially. For example, in the context of data imports or automated mapping tools, the use of satellite images, the mapping in the Global South or with reference to the humanitarian OSM team. For this, a reflected examination of the term or a systematic empirical study of its significance for VGI communities has not yet been carried out. Our key Interest is therefore to further investigate the significance and the relevance of the localness. We follow a mixed method approach with a qualitative side, which I will talk about later in the outlook. We want to make a critical reflection of the localness term and with a focus on the quantitative side, um, we want to look at the empirical comparison of localness in OSM. This is based on data analysis on uh, of OSM data. We started with a synopsis of all methods that have been already used to measure localness. The examination of the already implemented methods suggests that there are structural differences in the evaluation of the local material. On the one hand, the approaches pursue the goal of determining the geographic origin of or the home base of an OSM user. This is what I'm calling now local mappers. The methods that were used all have different requirements and varying efforts, and the, effort, the authors had different spatial scopes and scales. And often, uh, for example, a national level was used and not a global one. I'd like to give you now um, a brief overview of already used methods. 
First edits can be investigated out of the first node or the first in chain set. This, these first edits may indicate the location of a OSM user. I will come back later to this approach when I'm talking about contrasting two uh, methods. Other approaches focus on the activity area of a mapper, with the Delaunay triangulation nice and tip zip determined for each OSM mapper the area with the maximum number of node edits of a mapper um, or of, of, of his or her chains that centroids. More easily, the country with the most edited nodes of a mapper can be determined. Also, the center of mass of all the change set bounding boxes can be calculated. Lastly, Johnson et al. proposed to calculate the geometric median of all edited nodes of a user. Other approaches consider, for example, the location of a mapper in the region where he or she had the most edited days. Also, the maximum number of different tags in a region can be used as a locating method to, for mappers, or also the maximum number of local tags in a region, but this needs a specification of which tags can be considered as local, and this might be influenced by the researcher's view, which this leads me to the examination of what local content is. These methods, um, which look at local content, seek to find out where the density of local information is high, like where is the high local content. There are some approaches which focus on the OSM full history dump. For, uh, for example, you can look at, for, uh, at particular keys which are considered as relevant and there the density of these keys is observed. Another approach is to observe the total density of tags or unique keys per object. We use this approach, so I will come back later to it. Quinn also looked um, at the OSM chain set dump. He focused on the use of languages in the comments of the chain set. In the case of South America, he observed the preference of different tags per language group, and with that he could determine if a chain set was made by a local or remote mapper. Also, the OSM track dump or the OSM nodes dump can be um, observed. The track dump only exists until 2013, but still it can be an indicator for local knowledge because the tracks are usually collected on the ground with own equipment. Pascal Nice also looked at the OSM nodes dump and localized the nodes per country. Further investigation of the language of the nodes can lead to information of local knowledge. At the first insight, you can observe that many of these used methods work best at regional scale and only some function for a global comparison. And since other scholars mostly concentrate on either the localness of mappers or the localness of data, we are most interested in contrasting both approaches. We do so in implementing two methods that work on a global scale, one focusing on local mappers, the first chain set, and one aiming at identifying local content, the density of text and different keys per cell. On a global level, with these two approaches, we attempt a data-driven operationalization and approximation of localness. But it is important to note for us that these are just approaches and they cannot lead to a final answer what localness is and how to measure it. With the combination of these methods, we hope to explore where, whether local data actually coincide, coincides with the distribution of local mappers. Using the rather simple method of looking at the first OSM chain set of a user and similar to NICE, we examine the localness of mappers across the world. We assume that the first chain set of a mapper is near his or her original, original location, but the interpretation of this method is also limited since, since it is always possible that a new OSM user first has mapped remotely or away from home on a trip. But uh, so this method can only be there as an approximation. We use the first change set instead of the first node because the first node requires the usage of the OSM full history dump, which requires uh, much more computing power, but the result is not much better. So we choose the first change set. As I said, the method was 
um, used before, but the focus was not on the global level. And the ad advantage of exploring the first change set is that it can easily be applied for the whole globe for every mapper and not exclusively for the very active mappers. The result, as you can see on the uh, map, mirrors the same fundamental global inequalities that are also known for, from other research. You can see that, at, um, that there is again a regional center periphery and a global north-south divide. Uh, globalness follows, uh, localness follows the same pattern. However, this one method cannot give a lot of information whether the data that mappers edit is just plainly uh, putting a new way or node on the map or adding crucial information about uh, um, a building onto the map. And we want to examine closer whether the information on the map is defined by a great amount of tech or a great variety of different keys. So as a working hypothesis, it is assumed that the more specified information there is, the more knowledge the mapper must have had. And this knowledge is not likely to be as accessible from afar. Instead, it is more likely to be associated with a higher localness. Cisra et al. have already applied this method on a regional level for selected mappers, but we want to take a look at the global level. So we determined the ratio of the sum of all used OSM tags to the number of OSM elements per spatial unit. Also, we looked at the ratio of the sum of different OSM tags to the number of OSM elements per spatial unit. Naturally, this is just another approximation and it does not have to be that a great amount of tags means that there is a lot of local knowledge. The method has not yet been calculated globally so because we are still in the progress, progress. Um, but I will show you some results in a few seconds. When applied for different time periods, this method can also show where a high variability of the data exists. And when we are done with the first uh, exploration, we can also look for coincidences of this method with the analysis of the first chain sets. Here you can see um, two exemplary cases, um, Nigeria on the left and Germany on the right, with a grid of approximately 100 square kilometers and the data for the 1st of January 2020. Here you see the sum of the different OSM keys to the number of OSM elements. And the darker the grids are, the more different keys per object exist. You can see that Nigeria is more colorful than Germany. And that's because there are less objects in each grid. At the same time, you can look at the ratio of the amount of text per object. Here you can um, put a special intention to the border areas where a higher ratio is noticeable due to the tagging of borders. But here a more detailed examination is required. In total, Nigeria has more areas with a lower and a higher tagging ratio. And that is because there are more areas with few objects. That brings me to my outlook for further research in this field. After exploring localness on a global level and data driven, we are still what we are still doing, as you see, we want to pursue further research that critically reflects the concept of localness. Therefore, we want to conduct interviews and attend OSM meetings in a concrete case study and examine also some written materials, um, such as in the mailing list or the OSM forum or the OSM wiki. And we plan to include both active user groups and also local content, as I showed before. And using this regional case study, the richness and viability of the data can be investigated. With our further research, we want to focus on different questions that are focusing on the mapper or also on the data and the produced knowledge. Firstly, we want to examine the relationship between local and remote mappers more closely. And also to what extent the contributors really are normal local people who map their everyday environment. And also how much the, um, the mappers themselves recognize themselves as uh, localness, as a claim to authority, a mark of quality 
are also a normative guideline. Important for us is also the question if there are conflicts between local and non-local MEPAs about authority or truth. With a focus on the data and the produced knowledge, we want to look at the dividing lines between local and non-local data and also look at the question of to what extent can a project such as OSM with a globally uniform attribute system represent a limitation of lo local knowledge. This could happen when identical attributes are used in different local and socio-cultural contexts. This is possible because the standards are often origined in an European context. If one takes a closer look to the data at the object level, it becomes evident that the richness of the data is variable and dynamic. This may imply that the significance of the produced geographical knowledge is contested. In conclusion, let me now sum up my main points. After demonstrating the importance of localness in the project of OSM, I showed which attempts have already been made to measure localness. And we saw that it is relatively difficult to approach the concept globally, firstly, because the concept is not clearly defined, and secondly, because there is a large amount of data involved. In the next part, I showed that there, that um, we try to approach localness based on data-driven approaches on a global level by combining two methods, but we are still in the progress. And one of them is focusing on local mappers and the other on the richness of OSM data. Since the research is not fully carried out, the focus was on the methods instead of the results of the methods. In the last part of my presentation, I indicated that our research will continue. We will use qualitative methods to take a closer look at a regional case study or at material such as the OSM forum or wiki. We will further explore uh, the relation between local and non-local mappers and non-local and local OSM data. With that, I will leave it for today. I'm looking forward to receiving your questions and remarks. This is just a work in progress, so I'm happy to hear any remarks and ideas from you or tips. You can also contact me at my email address. Thank you for listening. Okay, uh, thank you everyone. Uh, thank you, uh, Suzanne, for uh, excellent uh, presentation. And uh, now it's time for the questions and answers. Um, so we now we turn our attention to the session part or the question part or the hack part. And um, I can see lots of comments. And uh, Suzanne, you have received a lot of attention. I'm seeing about uh, 26 people in attendance. And uh, thank you everyone for waiting uh, when we started and there were some hitches with the uh, video streaming. Um, so I'll start with the uh, comments. Um, so someone is pointing to Pascal Ness. Um, so someone says, uh, for mappers who start through um, hot OSM, their first change may be uh, non-local, but you could look for uh, missing maps or hot OSM hashtag and other tasking manager tags, etc. in the change set comment to filter those out. Um, someone also says, I would say that a great deal of uh, mapping in the developing world is performed by mappers who are starting to map very, very in cap capital letters, uh, far away from um, where they live. And um, I'm a great example. And this is coming from Greg Rose. That's exactly how I started. Thanks for this comment, Greg Rose. Um, 
I think going through this comment will give us a context for the discussion. So I will continue with the comments. Another comment says, I agree. If you live in a well-mapped uh, place like London, you may not see any point in adding uh, to us and there. But when you travel to a relatively unmapped uh, place, you are much more likely to map. Um, another, okay, this one is, is, is typing, so I'll skip that. As a local mapper, um, I'm paranoid. One, one day, uh, someone, something will come along and delete all my hard work. Uh, that's interesting. That, I think this person is touching on vandalism. Um, okay, I think this one, I'll come back to this comment, uh, comment five later because the person is uh, composing it. So we have, um, in terms of questions, I have my own here, and there is one question here for Suzanne. Um, is the local tax um, uh, analysis uh, done at the, at the country level, or what is the size of regions considered? This is coming from Claire. Okay. Over to you, um, Suzanne. Okay, um, thanks again also for the many comments and I want to comment the comments a little bit because also um, right, okay. I, I know that I also um, saw, said in the presentation that this one method of looking at the first uh, change set is uh, of course just an, an approximation and the comment that I can look for the hashtag missing maps or a hashtag hot awesome uh, OSM or something like this is very helpful I think and I wanted to only uh, like show the this method, but I also show that there are other methods there too. And so I'm I'm happy to read or to hear about the comments and what people think about uh, using the first change set and about the local tech analysis. Um, like I said, um, these um, tech analysis were were not um, performed for the whole world until now. Only uh, like other others already looked at some smaller regions like uh, um, I think some part of Italy and I also started to um, look at country levels but the plan is to 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 do this on a global level and to see, to look also if there are um, different um, patterns if, if in between global north and global south or between country uh, side and town or in I like to to zoom in to the national context but also to zoom out to look at the bigger picture yeah yeah brilliant brilliant thank you Susanne for um, addressing this question um, I think um, yeah there are no more questions but I think we have a maximum of about uh, 10 minutes so we can exhaust this um, I'll start with one question I have here um, I actually agree with you um, that the concept of local net is not clearly defined, and uh, considering the fact that also this this work is ongoing, um, um, so you described uh, local as home base. So when you say home base, are you considering the country level or community level or something else? For example, Pascal Nis, uh, I think someone has pointed this in the comments. Uh, his Pas Pascal Nis, uh, work on uh, OSM knows which you considered local. Um, uh, is um, at the country level, for example. So when you say localness and say home base, what are your views on this? You mean with home home days, the home of, of the, the person, or what did you mean? Uh, yes, so uh, that's what I heard in the talk that you said home base. So I yeah. assume that this is the home country. Yes. Uh, so in the home country, in this sense, uh, in my mind, if you say local, and then home base. I'm I'm assuming that at this point you are you are at the country level. You are talking about mm -hmm. things at the country level. Um, I think the country level is a first um, step, but um, it would be better to look at the um, more detail in within the country if you want to ex um, look at um, other the mappers. Um, mapping from the town to and, and to the countryside or are they um, only the people from from their village map their village so that it would be also interesting to not look um to not only determine the location of a mapper per country but also per smaller uh, district or per smaller um, grid cell and um, yes but it's also as a an, an approximation the country level also gives a good impression and um, about where someone um, that uh, where more mappers are from and where less mappers map from. Yes, but also um, like the, the comments, um, the, the question about what is local knowledge is also uh, the question. If you um, 
like being in in another country for for a longer time i, I don't know when does it start to be a local are you you're still not a local even if you if you were there for some time but if you we were never there you you only you know less information but if you if you were there at least for for a trip you you know better about this this place as someone a remote mapper who only looks at the uh, satellite Im imagery um that that's very interesting so probably um, i will link this um um to um in the comments for it because we don't have any more questions so let's 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 jump into discussion now using the comments and uh, what comes up um so um i think um what um in comment three, uh, Greg Rose um, talked about the fact that you know um, uh, he uh, was uh, uh, far away and things like that, and uh, could map um, somewhere else. And he's a great example in terms of um, mapping in the developing world, even though uh, he is far away from home and things like that. Um, so, and uh, that 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 uh, brings me to the uh, the thing I'm thinking of uh, in terms of the uh, you know the the local localness or local mappers and uh, uh, remote mappers. So in one sense, uh, I think the, there is a distinction in your talk. I think you, you try to, do, to you know, differentiate these two. Um, but then on, on the other hand, you, it, I get a sense that um, they could be um, the same, in the same group. Um, but then you, you, you're using local knowledge as a as sort of a criteria for for either you know uh, 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 differentiating or uh, bringing them together, and uh, so I'm asking. Uh, so because um, on one hand you seem to differentiate local and uh, uh, remote mappers, but on the other hand it seems that uh, um, you are not. Uh, so mappers have um, uh, more knowledge, which is likely to be uh, local knowledge. Do you mean even for remote mappers uh, with such knowledge? So for example, if a remote mapper Let's put, uh, for example, Greg Rose in the comment, uh, who is now a remote mapper and has local knowledge uh, and is mapping uh, somewhere else. Uh, would you consider the, he, Greg, as a remote mapper, now a local, or in, within your concept of uh, localness, a local mapper? Mm, yes, uh, like the distinction between the local remote mappers and also the local knowledge is like was a result of um, seeing which methods were already applied to measure this localness. But I also think if if um, Greg, as an example, um, is a remote mapper mapping somewhere else, and in, in another analysis, um, I'm looking for local knowledge, and he's mapping there uh, like very specific uh, local text, then he would be this would be considered as local knowledge even if he would be considered in another analysis as a, ro a remote mapper because his uh, first uh, his main area is somewhere else but still his his knowledge uh, his produced information could be um, considered as local in the, the case um, that that it is very rich or very di uh, he's very up to date and he uses uh, information that a, a local also could know or would know. Yeah. Ah, very interesting. So um, I, I will assume that in this case, uh, you have a, re a redundancy in this case that uh, Greg will be both local and uh, remote yeah. in your yeah, analysis. Kind of. Yeah. Uh, brilliant. <laughs> <laughs> Congratulations, Greg. I think you have been promoted um, uh, <laughs> for having both status uh, as either a local uh, the, um, <laughs> remote mapper uh, because of um, the great work you're doing. Um, mm -hmm. So, okay. Oh, I've seen uh, interesting questions also coming up. Um, we have about two or three minutes, so maybe mm -hmm. you can just keep it short. Um, mm -hmm. One says, am I, am I a local when I'm a gas pipeline that is uh, a quarter of France? That's, uh, I think this is very interesting because then I think we need more background of this person, isn't it? Because, yes, we need more um, background. Yeah. Yeah, with respect to the local knowledge, because in your case, you're using the local knowledge as a benchmark. So whoever asks this question, we need more information about your local knowledge, and that will determine whether you're local or remote. Um, <laughs> uh, are you okay, with, Susanna, with this? Or Yeah, I'm okay with this, yes. Uh, okay, one more. Uh, one more. I think we have another question here. Um, yeah. It would be great to have um, access to data about localness. Are you planning to release either uh, the data or your algorithms so that others can run them too? This from Frederick. Uh, yes, I, I also had I want to 
uh, say that I used um, the help of um, the Heigit. This is a, on, in Germany also. And I don't know if it's a. It's, they also are doing a lot of work with uh, OpenStreetMap and history analysis. And I, I it's on GitHub already. The um, the code I used for the tech tech analysis, but um, for the other analysis, I, I think yeah, I can also um, publish or release this but um when i'm releasing the the um the data in a like paper i, I we will read about it i will have to, i can share it with the community and that people can see what i what i've done what are the results and um yeah the data should be also um, included to this that uh people can know what i what i've done so this is a, the plan and, and maybe maybe i can also put them on a dashboard or somewhere online that you can look at it and maybe a little bit of interactive um, page but like i said i'm still in my progress and it's, i i've i'm new in this academia i only started uh, in january so it's everything is new still and that's what i am planning to release this and yeah brilliant. 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 Uh, thank you everyone everyone for um this excellent uh, session. Um, I think there are a lot of comments, there are um, uh, interesting things happening here, and I think we'll follow on with that. Um, and I hope all of you enjoy the rest of the um, of the of the conference. And, and Susanna, the, we've got um, a higher um, attendance. Uh, we are now in, uh, going from, I think we started from around 22, it's now about 20, 31. So thank you everyone for the excellent um, uh, comments here. Todd, um, thank you Todd, all my pay, um, Greg Rose, um, Annie, Rosie Maps, uh, G, all of you, Janet, uh, thank you all uh, for this wonderful session. We made it um, happen, and thank you, everyone. And I hope you enjoy the rest of the of the conference. Bye-bye. Uh, thank you.